In this video, you will discover five things to do when you meet a great man and then get too excited. Hi, I'm Antje Boyd, founder and creator of the Magnetize Your Man Method. And look, if you're new to my channel, comment, like, and smash that subscribe button so you get notified for more juicy videos coming your way. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Number five, take him off the pedestal. You see, one motto I have is the soulmate is real, but the pedestal you put him on is not. Allow him to have flaws. You see, what oftentimes happens is we're just seeing a snapshot of an aspect of a man in the moment. So I just want to give you like just reality check here. So what happens is, right, you see, oh, wow, I love his charisma. Okay, that's like a snapshot. How do you know that holds true over time on a time continuum? How do you know this holds true over consistency in like in different settings with his parents, with his friends at work? And also, how do you know what other characteristics he has as well? So oftentimes we'll be not looking at what is he not showing, right? Who is he not being right now. So what I would say, first of all, is take him off the pedestal and also see why is it so safe for you to put a man on a pedestal? Why is that such an automatic? Who have you put on a pedestal, of course, in the past so that you have to turn yourself into a pretzel, right? You have to actually be someone that you're not. Like oftentimes that's of course related to the parents and oftentimes to the opposite sex. So that would be for you, your dad, um, if you're watching this as a woman, of course, uh, <clears throat> you know, and like really seeing that you have an emotionally unavailable dad. And so of course you put him on this pedestal, you would do anything for him. You think you're responsible for him being perfect or for him, like not having any demons on him or for him to whatever is going on with your dad, like, but there's this way of like where you want to save him. And so one way how we do that is by putting people on pedestals, because when we do that, then we create the same outcome we experienced as a child, which was disappointment. So we, you can't be just outright disappointed. You need to have something that you hold on to or that you fall off like the pedestal, right? And then you can experience the full blown disappointment. That's how smart our brain is. So take that man off the pedestal. Number four, become me focused instead of him focused. And you've heard me say that before. It is really important because what happens is when you made an amazing man, you forget the amazingness of yourself. You actually forget. So what's going to happen is you're actually like in your body and then you look from the inside out at him. And what you're not seeing is how he actually sees you. So actually, what do you look like from the outside in, from the other perspective? So for example, if I would give you an assignment, like not only write about how you feel about the man or what you would tell him or how much you admire him or how much this or that or the other, but also think about like, okay, what would the man write to you? Like, why are you such a catch? Why is he so lucky to have all the attention from you? This is really important because if men start to feel that you put them on a pedestal, for one, they don't trust you. By the way, this is the direct reports from men, from single men who are dating. So they don't trust you because they know that they're not perfect and they have no chance to be all of who they are with you because you already decided that they're brilliant, that they're majestic, that they're magnificent. And so they can never show all of who they are because that will actually lead to rejection. And of course, they don't want to experience that either, right? Men have just as much fear of rejection as women do. So really important. Number three is find the pivot point. I call that context over content. So what oftentimes happens is we're meeting this amazing man, right? He has this like bachelor's degree and he helps the whole world and he's handsome and he's a humanitarian and, and so on and so on. So we're just like, oh, and this, oh, oh, he's so great. He's so awesome. He's so wonderful and all of that. Um, and then what starts to happen is like we're getting so caught up in the content. And also what oftentimes happens is, and by the way, you have to be aware of that because some narcissists can also look like that too. 
So really be mindful of that because then what happens is we get caught up in sort of like this cloud or this spiral, right? We can't get out of it and we get almost dizzy. We are starting to lose ourselves. We're starting to, to feel like no longer grounded inside of ourselves. What do I feel? How do I feel inside of my body? How do I actually, what relationship do I have to myself? But it becomes like a chemical addiction towards the other person. So what do you want to do instead? So this is actually when you're already like just sort of like on the hill downwards, right? So you have already gotten attached and you started to already get slightly addicted in the brain patterns, all of that. So what I always say is like, so visualize like that mountain and you're going now downhill, right? You're going now down and not in that sense that you're going downhill, but more like you start to lose yourself. You start to lose control over yourself and you also start to lose context. What you want to do instead is actually say, hold on a second, where is the pivot point? So you want to actually catch yourself when you're at the top of the mountain. And so at the top of the mountain, that's really saying, okay, I'm going to go on a day today and there's a chance that I'm going to really find this guy amazing. So how can I pace myself, which by the way, pacing is one of the pillars of the secure attachment style. So how can I pace myself? And I already know ahead of time that there's a chance that I could get attached to this guy. What can I do instead? How can I already set myself up that I'm going to leave the date first, let's say, right? You can still have your heart open and still be welcoming, but just like, what can I do, right? Like maybe just spend an hour, uh, maybe an hour and a half, two hours with him. That's it. And then I have a cutoff and then I come back to myself and actually see, can I create this by myself? So when I started doing that, this was in 2010, I was dating this incredible guy and he had a sailboat, was handsome, popular, yada, yada, yada. And so it's, it was easily to get attracted to him, to get attached to him, to get obsessed with him. And so, you know, I knew I had to create something completely different. So one Sunday, as usual, he was inviting me out to go sailing with him and some other people and floaties and all of that in Long Beach and so great, right? And so... But what I really started to understand was this. If I want to really catch myself now at the top of the hill before I go down or before I get attached, I have to be able to create that same experience, that same emotional response that I have with him in myself. So I turned his invitation down lovingly, right? You want to keep a man encouraged, of course. And said, you know, I just want to spend the day by myself like as like an auntie that I ended up spending it actually with my girlfriend in Santa Monica and we got our nails done, we got some amazing lunch and all of that. And I was so proud of myself because that shifted something so dramatically. For one, I didn't go down the hill. I didn't get overly attached. I was able to walk out eventually. It's a different story for a different video. Um, but he became obsessed with me. So no more pedestals, but he was thinking, who is this woman? She's turning down my invitation. You may recall the story from the book, uh, Why Men Love Bitches, where this woman who has Tupperware parties gets invited to go on this yacht cruise in the Caribbean by the sky, and she turns them down because she's loyal to her women doing the Tupperware party. And so he actually ends up quitting his cruise halfway through, flying back home and finding out who is this woman. So that's the effect. That's what happens when you catch yourself at the pivot point. Number two, stop future anticipation. I'm going to give you a challenge. So let's say you've gone on three dates with this guy. I want you to actually see, so what actually happened? How long was the date? Not your interpretations of it. Not like he flirted with me. Not like, oh, we're, we're probably already getting engaged or he's already seeing me as his girlfriend or whatever the case may be. All those interpretations that you have that you're projecting onto the wall that are literally nothing. But instead, you want to pull yourself back sort of like a must. You would pull back a Mustang who wants to run off too fast and say, okay, hold on a second. So what I started to do, I was actually putting my calendar. Okay, I had a phone call with him and it was like 30 minutes long because your brain will like generalize and will, will like catastrophize and dramatize and like, oh, we had like this super long conversation. It was so amazing. It turns out it was 30 minutes and then you didn't talk to him for another five days. And so you actually start to come back more into the secure arena of the attachment because you start to feel more like, oh, this is what really happened. Versus this is the interpretations what I think happened. So you want to make a distinction there and actually see, oh, this is me just actually just talking about what the future would look like. But I don't know that yet. All I know right now is I had two dates with him 
and he's gonna ask me out potentially on a third date. You see, I had one girlfriend, uh, she was definitely more on the avoidant attachment uh, style scale, but I learned something from her. So when she was going on a date, it was so interesting because she would just be like done with the date, hanging out with her friends. And, and I said, oh, are you ready? When are you going to see this guy again? And she's like, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I don't know if I'm ever going to see him again. Like, you know, if he calls me, it's a nice surprise. Um, but yeah, she was always like a little bit surprised. She was never assuming that it's going to be the next date. And of course, she had guys after her left and right. You can't even believe because there was no assumptions and men can tell when you get attached to them. They can tell when you count on them calling you, texting you, asking you out if you want to be a girlfriend with them and so on. So just, you know, sit back a little bit, be like, oh, do I still want this man? You know, and just really stop future anticipating. And then finally, number one, be your own best friend. This helps you to gain perspective. Oftentimes we're so caught up in the moment, we can't even see anything, you know, through our rose-colored glasses. So imagine you're your own best friend and she comes to you and she says, you know, I just met this guy and he's so amazing and he's a doctor and he travels the world and he's humanitarian, he does this and that and the other. And, and you'd be like, whoa, girlfriend, so amazing, I love that. And you are amazing too. Or let's see how this unfolds. Let's see who he shows up next time. Let's not assume that he shows up the same the same way next time because we don't know how he's going to show up next time. So you're like going to be a loving, encouraging, but like also a very grounded girlfriend to your girlfriend as well. Ladies, this is it for today. If you like this video, I'm inviting you to watch my free playlist course on how to make a man chase you by clicking the link below and also taking the free magnetize your man quiz at magnetize your man dot com or simply clicking that link below. I had so much fun filming this video. Comment below what resonated for you, what helped you that you no longer get too excited for a man who simply doesn't deserve it yet. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.